Okay, the following is a sort of an ad hoc uh, tutorial on how to record and work with uh, WAV files and, and so forth. And this is for Dave in Pratt, Kansas. Okay, the first thing to remember is just to treat your uh, computer uh, exactly like a tape recorder. Uh, you'll need to connect up the, the record out from the receiver to the line input over here on the sound card. In this particular case, the, uh, it's blue colored, but uh, that may not be standard. You will show a, an arrow input there. Uh, the arrow output, the sound card output, goes to the uh, playback connection on the back of the amper receiver. Do not use the microphone input. It would be loud and distorted, and uh, it'd be in mono. It would not be in stereo. Now, every computer's sound card is going to come with some kind of a, an application to record and, and play. Uh, but right now, we're just going to look at Windows uh, Mixer. Uh, there's going to be some kind of an icon for your volume control uh, down here. You click it once, and you get a volume control. Click it tw Well, let's try that again. Click it twice, and you get your full mixer here. Now, this is for uh, playback. Uh, you also under options, properties, recording, you select the line input. In this case, we'll kill the microphone. Uh, you probably want to disable any other uh, uh, unused. You probably want to disable any other unused uh, inputs there. And this will uh, select your record level. Now we're going to leave that up, and hopefully it stays up. Yeah. And we've just brought up the uh, Audio Grabber program. Now we're going to have a, a uh, in my experience, there's going to be a pretty loud input when I turn on that tuner. Yep, you can see it's got the levels pegged out and rather distorted. Now, by adjusting the level control here, you probably want it uh, bouncing up somewhere. Uh, about halfway, let's say. You can always uh, adjust the uh, levels later on playback uh, in a process that's called normalization. Right now, um, let's okay. Let's go back to uh, Audio Grabber's uh, initial screen here. We'll come back here in a moment. Um, you're going to want to uh, uh, tell it whether to uh, re in what format to record. Uh, in this case, we're going to select uh, WAV files. That's uh, Windows Audio 16-bit uh, 44 kilohertz uh, files. Also, in this case, we're going to want to tell it where to uh, uh, where to place the recorded file. Uh, in this case, this is uh, in in our uh, little folder that's on the desktop, so that'll be acceptable for now. Uh, file line in sampling. We're back where we were. And we'll just uh, press the record button. Oh, and you have uh, uh, you can do it as a timer recording too, uh, if you want to record off the radio uh, at a predetermined time or something. But right now we'll just call this a test recording, and we've named it test. And we'll just uh, record for a little while here. And uh, our source. Our source is just a little stereo tuner now. Um, excuse me a second. Now to record off of a phonograph, it would work exactly the same, except that the phonograph would have to be plugged into uh, an amplifier or receiver on the magnetic phono input, and then take the record out, like uh, like I hope to be able to show you uh, uh, in a picture here in just a moment. Take that record out uh, over to the uh, uh, line input of the, of the computer, the auxiliary input. Let's see, in this particular case, uh, here's your input on the computer again, uh, with the arrow pointing input. You'll need a uh, uh, a stereo RCA uh, uh, cable that goes to a, a one eighth inch uh, stereo plug uh, to make it into that connector. Uh, the output here would go from the same kind of a cable, uh, a one inch, one eighth inch uh, stereo plug going to two RCA male uh, connectors, left and right channel. 
And I think we've got enough uh, of a test recording right now. So we'll just go ahead and stop that recording. And we recorded for a minute and 37 seconds. It says here it copied OK. And we can stop that and close that program. We can also close our uh, recording level control. And we should have a WAV file here uh, labeled test right there in that same uh, directory. And there we are. We're, we're playing our, our little WAV file that we just recorded. Now, now uh, in order to record direct to a, a, a CD, uh, these WAV files uh, must be 16-bit, uh, uh, 44 uh, kilohertz stereo WAV files uh, to record to an audio CD. Uh, there is some software that will record MP3s directly to music CDs, uh, but normally it's considered that you need to be working with WAV files, and it's better really to work with WAV files anyway uh, so that you can edit them and uh, get pops and clicks out of it if you've recorded off of a phonograph album and so forth. Uh, you can always make MP3 files from those WAVs uh, later. Now I use an, I use an old program called uh, DC Art, uh, DC Art 32. Uh, it's a very handy program for working with 16-bit uh, 44 kilohertz uh, WAV files. Uh, it only works with WAV files. You can't use it to work with MP3 files. Now we fire up uh, DC Art, and the first time you fire it up, you're going to need to tell it one or two things here. Let's look at preferences. Display length limit, uh, three megabytes is is not not uh, acceptable. Uh, you need to just increase that to the maximum, which I think is three gigabytes. So just make three thousand megabytes uh, uh, your your default there, and click OK. And then file open source. And in this case, uh, my wave files that I'm interested in are over on C drive under temp wave and here we have a, a rather uh, an album side length wave file uh, with several songs on it and so we have you know left and right channels uh, both displayed here uh, a single mono signal would only show as, as, as one channel but right now it's stereo and uh, you can uh, Press the play button up here, or you can right click and, and play from any position. So let's just play the. Okay, yes, and just the quiet part at the beginning of the album. Okay, you get the idea. Now you can expand out uh, an area here that you want to look at. Press the plus button up here. And right now I'm looking for, or the minus button to bring it back. All right, now I'm just looking for the end of a song and the uh, beginning of the next song. Play from, play from here. Okay, somewhere in here we have the beginning of the next song and you can see that the sections are, are quieter here and you can expand it upwards if you want to look at a small section there you can expand it upwards by by pulling this this little uh, button over here you can see that there little cursor moving there. I'm going to set a marker right about here at the beginning of that song. We'll expand that out and look at it. And we'll right click from here. Okay, and so that's about where we want the beginning of this song. And notice what we have here is a, a, a little a little tick or a little pop, and we can get that out of there. We'll take the advantage of this opportunity to show that. We'll expand that out. See that little click? 
and I highlight it and I press the letter I on the keyboard that stands for interpolate and that click just goes away. Now we'll just come back and look at it again and this is where we want to start the next track we'll just uh, put a marker right there it says add marker that's right click by the way right click add marker and double click over here for now and then bring it back up now you can add markers at the beginning of, of each song just that same way and then you tell it to let me just highlight everything here Uh, we're going to split tracks here, CD prep, quantize for CD audio, uh, you don't need to know what that means, chop file into pieces, uh, tell it to preserve the original file, yes, uh, if you don't then uh, I found that it numbers the tracks backwards which is not a great big problem but uh, yes. Now this will take a little time uh, depending on the speed of the computer but it'll, it'll, it's now going to cut this, uh, this long wave file into two. Uh, we've got uh, one song uh, and then a, a second longer song. In, in the case of a complete album side, of course, you might have six or seven songs depending on how many markers you've set. And okay, it's, it's completed that operation. You, never mind the playlist, just tell it no. And uh, right now we're, we're done working with that. So we'll just uh, close it. If you've it, now this this program gives you options for a number of uh, you know processing options and so forth. We're not going to worry about those right now. But it has uh, pop and click filters, high filters, low filters, uh, all kinds of things you want to do. Uh, sometimes with audio files, I I like to think of this program as a sort of a Swiss Army knife uh, for working with audio files. But right now we're just going to close it. over in uh, the temp waves uh, file is where our uh, our our new songs will be and that would be this one here So, in, in uh, this particular case, we've uh, extracted one song. Uh, in this particular case, we've extracted one song from, from, that, uh, from that album side. Okay, now just a, a little more detail on, on some of the things you can do with this. Now, uh, this program will, uh, has an automatic pop and click filter, uh, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm just going to show you how to split files and, and uh, make a CD. Uh, I've highlighted a little area there. We'll expand that out and find where the beginning of this album actually is. There's a little audio here along with pops and clicks, but that's about where it starts. Okay, we're going to put a marker here highlight the area prior to that and then just uh, cut that out of there and the computer will think about that for a moment <clears throat> now if I was doing this at home I have a little better computer there this would all be happening a little faster and now we'll uh, remove you know, or clear all markers uh, double click and expand that all out again. We're going to be looking for the beginnings of each of our songs. This is a 23 minute uh, album side here. Um, okay, that's the end of the one song. Okay, 
and we'll set a marker here. Double click, hit the minus sign to bring it back out. Now we'll look for the beginning of the next song. Okay, uh, expand it, right click, add a marker, double click here, minus, minus. Now this looks like maybe the beginning of the next song here. Expand that out a little bit. And you can see uh, right there. Yeah. And another marker. And now at the very end of the album, there's going to be some slack space you want to get rid of. Let's expand that out. You can see this here. So right here, add another marker, double click there, and cut. Edit and cut. Oh, uh, I'm gonna uh, just uh, highlight the whole area here. I'm, I'm And then I, I click again here and drag this over that way to make sure the whole thing is highlighted. And then uh, once again, effects, no, uh, I'm sorry, uh, CD prep, quantize for CD audio, and then uh, chop file into pieces. Preserve the original file, uh, yes, so that we uh, have our, our numbering correct on the resulting WAV files. And then uh, you know, these WAV files would be suitable to uh, burn to a CD, and we'll, uh, we'll show that here in a moment. Ah, it already did that, so not a problem. Okay. Hopefully, well, that all worked okay. Uh, we'll come back with uh, 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 burning some uh, CD tracks with Nero here in a little bit. You know, actually my CD burner on this computer is not working right now, so we'll stop short of actually burning any any files. But my Nero icon happens to be down here, so that's we'll call up the uh, Nero program. That'll take just a moment. And you have options here. In this case, make audio CD. And you can click the add button and go and look through the directories, or you can just drag them over from from your uh, from your other application. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is uh, ending in the number one. Uh, on the file name, so that's the first track. And uh, the wave file number two. The wave file number three. The wave file numbered four and the wave file numbered five. Okay, forget forget five. Just to delete that. That's just a fragment apparently. I'm, apparently I messed up on that. But uh, anyway. Uh, you want to have no pause between tracks normally for an audio CD and then next and you can give it a, a title and the name of the artist and then tell it to, to burn your disc and I'm not going to do that right now because as I say my my uh, CD burner on this computer uh, doesn't work right now <clears throat> I will be replacing it soon but uh, it gives you the opportunity to save your project and so forth a lot of times you might want to do that it would usually save those files to a uh, documents directory, but you can specify where you want to save it. Okay, so that's, uh, that's about it for right now, I think. And uh, uh, I might try and refine this a little bit at a, uh, at a near future date. And Dave, if you have any questions, you're welcome to call me at Electronic Wizards. Thanks a lot. Bye.